the Martyr Empath. There are five Cadras. The Saviour, the Magnet, the Carrier, the Giza or Geyser, and Martyr. The Martyr Cadra is nothing to do with the Martyr Complex, which is where people seek out suffering or persecution as it feeds a physical need or a need to avoid responsibility that perhaps might be seen more with a narcissist but those with the martyr cadre do not exhibit it in terms of an avoidance of responsibility much rather they take on too much responsibility the martyr cadre presents itself either as insignificant, significant, strong, very strong, or majority. Some people don't present with any aspect of the martyr complex whatsoever. Whereas the carrier empath exhibits control and makes a calculated and assertive decision to invest in helping and taking the burden from elsewhere, the martyr lacks this level of control. They are almost blind to the boundary that exists and feel an almost inescapable compulsion to provide assistance to others and to do so with a detriment to themselves. Whereas the carrier will give of themselves, but has a natural innate buffer whereby they will halt the behavior as they essentially recognize that they have given enough. The martyr goes beyond this. In a sense, the martyr is carrier 2.0 that they engage in the behaviours of the carrier, but go even further to the extent of experiencing some kind of loss, detriment, or harm. The scope of this is very much dependent upon the size of the minority or whether they have achieved majority martyr status. Where it's majority martyr status on a day-to-day -day basis the giving till it hurts governs their overall decision-making and behaviours. Where it's a minority aspect, there are only particular aspects of that individual's interaction with the narcissist and with other people that becomes affected by the martyr cadre so that they engage in behaviours which cause them a problem. So, for example, they may act as a carrier in many other aspects of the dynamic with the narcissist, but when it comes to money, they provide money to the narcissist with no expectation of repayment, that they repeatedly allow themselves to be drained financially by the narcissist because they deem that that is acceptable. They don't allow themselves, for instance, to be drained with regard to energy or time, but it is that aspect of money where they have that susceptibility. The martyr cadre is essentially governed by a mantra of selflessness, sacrificial behaviour and being kind. Martyrs invariably minimise their own accomplishment. Whilst empaths don't go around shouting from the rooftops as to what they are, that is more likely an unaware mid-range narcissist who believes that they're an empath, it's certainly the case with the martyr that they very much hide their light under their bushel. They dismiss their own actions with a shrug. They do not want attention to be drawn to their sacrifices. They just get on with it and bear the wounds of sacrifice, not as a badge of honour, but something that they recognise is just as a consequence of what they must do. They essentially shrug it off. A narcissist that would behave in a similar way to a martyr would want you to know about the pain that they've experienced. The narcissist would want you to understand the extent to which they have offered to do things and so much that they've done for you, often falsifying it. But with the martyr, 
It's almost as if they have taken a vow of silence with regard to what they have experienced and suffered and put themselves through in the name of sacrifice for another. They subconsciously and instinctively seek out opportunities to exhibit sacrifice, not from the point of drawing praise, but for enabling them to flex this aspect of their empathic personality. Willful suffering on their part feeds a compulsion, and they rationalize that it is acceptable to behave in that manner as a consequence of a sense of duty, whether in a relationship, so a sense of born out of love, be it romantic or unconditional in a familial situation, a sense of duty in an occupation or profession, a sense of obligation to maintain a friendship. Martyrs will invariably stay in an abusive relationship, even when it is impacting on their own well-being. Whilst this is seen with empaths as a whole, it is more pronounced when it occurs with the martyr. They have a sense that they are responsible for the well-being of others and the happiness of other people. Martyrs may, though not always, consider themselves actually unworthy, and by engaging in self-sacrifice, that is how they achieve a sense of worth. This is more than the giving of the codependent school, but is a deep-seated belief that sacrifice is right, proper, and necessary. The martyr does not seek out the thanks of other people. The martyr does not look for approval, or pity, or sympathy. Instead, the martyr functions on the basis of self-knowledge of that sacrifice. Instead, it is the narcissist that seeks out thanks, approval, pity, or sympathy for their supposed sacrifices. A true martyr just gets on with it. And whatever it is that they suffer the harm or detriment, whether it is exhaustion, illness, loss of money, loss of self-esteem, loss of friendships, loss of connections, loss of their job, physical harm, mental torture, whatever it might be, they are blinded by that self-sacrificial approach to believe that it is right, just, and proper. The martyr will often find themselves a role within the relevant relationship, be it romantic, familial, social, work, etc. They will sacrifice aspects of their own needs and personality to fit into a particular role of, for instance, the supportive buddy the confidant, the peacemaker, the ever-present helper, or the comic relief amongst others. The martyr may sacrifice having a voice, preferring to sit and suffer in silence. They may reject offering a viewpoint, believing that their view is not required or material. They may shirk argument, believing it better to keep themselves quiet than risk upsetting others through a forthright opinion. Martyrs are often affected by cultural roles, for instance, where the individual is expected to be the one that not only shoulders the burden, but does so to an extent whereby they make sacrifice, that they are seen as, for instance, the ever-present homemaker, that they are expected to be the one that is nurturing and empathic, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what trials and tribulations come their way. Assigned roles also impact upon the creation of the martyr through childhood, where a, where a parent has behaved in a sacrificial manner, whether an empath or, more commonly, the narcissist, that child learns that sacrifice is what is expected. Of course, the sacrifice of the narcissist is self-seeking and self-serving, but the empathic individual that looks upon such behaviours becomes conditioned to believe as a child that sacrifice is the right way forward. In terms of the narcissist that seek out the martyr, 
This commonly is amongst lesser narcissists, because the individual that caters for their inherent laziness must be seen as a good thing, and therefore the lower lesser and middle lesser are unconsciously drawn to those with the Mata Kadra, usually to be found at a significant and strong. Upper lesser type B are particularly drawn to those that engage in sacrifice because it caters to their bullying nature. That The bold, brash, bullying and belligerent upper lesser type B can really issue harsh demands of the martyr cadre of empath with the expectation that they will scurry around, flagellating themselves, almost working themselves to death in order to fulfil the ridiculous demands of the upper lesser type B. Mid-range narcissists are generally less concerned about the exhibition of martyr, as a consequence of, than believing themselves to be a good person. Although exceptions are seen with the middle-middle-range type B, that their self-indulgent whining often requires a sacrificial individual to put up with it. To some extent, upper mid-range will look for a sliver of martyr also as a consequence of their superiority and the belief that that person is submissive to them. Amongst the graters, it is usually sought by lower greater and upper greater. Lower greater because of their more bullying nature of themselves, their more Less, or their rather less polished approach of being the iron fist and the velvet glove. So to have somebody that will go the extra mile to cater for the very busy world of the lower greater, often found in military and political arenas, is particularly useful. With the upper greater, the cerebral aspect of their behaviours, whereby they revel in such manipulations, means that those with the martyr aspect, repeatedly sacrificing themselves, provides entertainment and amusement to the particularly eminence grease mind of the upper greater. It can be seen with the middle greater, but they are less inclined to require that. Their focus tends to be more upon those aspects of saviour and magnet instead. The martyr cadre is one whereby the individual lives for sacrifice. It doesn't mean that they sacrifice every aspect of their life. It's not that they are a complete doormat. No. Dependent upon the size of the martyr aspect, it may only be certain aspects of their life where it kicks in. It's only with the majority where the essence of their life is governed by this mantra of selflessness, sacrificial behaviour and kindness. If you'd like to determine whether you experience the martyr aspect, if you are an empath, then undertake the empath detector. The link is in the video description. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.